One of my favorite horror game experiences has been reimagined and reworked with layers of fear. Before we begin, I would like to thank the developers, Blooper Team, for sending us a code to help us create this video. And in this, we will be discussing the story that is within the brand new release of Layers of Fear, as it incorporates the two previous titles into one new narrative. I hope you enjoy the video. Let's get into it. We are a lone writer, finding herself inside a lighthouse with nothing but the elements to keep her company leaving her family in order to be here in order to write a very important book but this lighthouse is different darker in many ways the prize for winning a competition to allow her to enjoy the entire place to herself and to serve as inspiration Competitors had to write an essay and submit their work concerning a particular artist, a painter to be specific, whom is said to be one of the most mysterious and tragic figures in the history of modern art. And now, in solitary within this lighthouse, the book may now be written by the winner. A sweet gig, on its surface, a sensationalist. A horror writer would get the honours of writing such a book. Many thought that it would be a scholar or somebody of a higher education, but only one truly captured who this painter was. Hello? I received the word that you came to the lighthouse. You find everything to your liking. Well, that was fast. Yeah, I'm here. I'm very pleased to hear it. Now, are you writing? What? You must understand, Mrs. It is imperative that you start your work as soon as possible. I will remind you that you signed a contract. Uh -huh. now, it is very specific on the timeline. Uh, I would advise you abide by it. Goodbye. A strange request, to say the least. To not even allow the writer to settle in, but work is work. I did mention that this lighthouse was different, unusual. The noises come from a room that was once locked, now open. Maybe it's just the rats. There is no comfort like hearing the voice of a loved one. Seems only appropriate to give the proud son at home a call. Hello? Hi, darling. I'm calling to let you know I'm here. Can you believe the agency already called to see if I was working? That's insane. Did you at least have time to settle in a bit? How's the lighthouse? Inspiring? Spooky? Haunted? All of these things. I was just looking around and it's certainly something. How are you? Do the meds work? Don't you worry about me, Mama. This is your time to do your work. To live your life. <gasps> well, maybe you're right. I should probably get to it then. Bye, son. Love you. Love you too, Mama. A haunted lighthouse filled with rats and silence. A great backdrop for any horror writer. 
and with the added encouragement of family, the writer can begin her work. We would like to ask you to cease bothering our pest control specialists, as well as refrain from sending us any more of you highly inappropriate letters. All of our employees that visited your house reported absolutely no signs of a rodent infestation of any kind, and as such, decided not to act further than a prophylactic spray. Please treat this letter as a final warning, or else the next envelope you'll receive will be from our lawyers. To be compared to the likes of Caravaggio and Leonardo da Vinci is no small achievement for any artist. Putting his talents on full display at the gallery opening for the world to see. Attending the event with his beautiful fiancée. And her black gown, purposely chosen to let the spectators know that the couple is expecting. The wife was considered by many to be as talented as her husband. Maybe even more so. The new face of music, as she was described by her peers and critics alike. Her music so inspirational that she would regularly play music for her husband to help him work. To create masterpieces. The birth of a healthy young daughter would leave the family practically perfect, and for the talented perfectionist painter, there was no better outcome, no other alternative. But perfection has a strange tendency to deteriorate. The long-awaited opening of the Galactic Department store turned into hell on earth when the building's wiring burst into flames. While the majority of the visitors managed to reach the emergency exits in time, several unfortunate attendees were trapped in the back of the building, having no chance to escape the raging inferno. The exact number of casualties has not yet been determined, although it is estimated that at least a dozen people have been severely injured. The owner of the Galactic, Ronald Sheffield, has so far declined the comment on today's tragic events. It is funny how a single random event can change a person. To set someone down a different path, a different mindset. And the painter was no different. Let me ask you one simple question. Have you completely lost your goddamn mind? I know you're going through some rough times right now. I really do. That's why I've agreed to let you do those illustrations in the first place. For all time's sake. I even deliberately gave you a trivial task, because I expected Little Red Riding Hood to be something you can draw in your sleep. What I didn't expect is to get this demented nightmare fuel you submitted for a kid's bedtime story. There is no way in hell I'm using this, and I already regret agreeing to a payment in advance. Please, get your shit together. The problem with being a perfectionist is actually being able to realize your end goal. Perfection. See, the painter was destined for greatness. At least, that's what it seemed like. But things changed after that damn fire. Everything changed. Now there is only one thing left to do. To create perfection. To create his magnum opus. The one painting that will make all of this worth it. Lost. You deserve it. Finish it. Two souls. So passionate. So talented. And yet they wanted to build something so... Ordinary. A home. A wife. A family. Peaceful life. Betrayal of everything that made them both artists. And yet, they clung to it. 
What people don't seem to understand is what it takes to make a good painting. The work doesn't start with the brush any more than family doesn't start with marriage. The work starts with the canvas. This mansion was once a beautiful home for this prodigal family, and now it's something else entirely. Now, a tiny bit to the left. Yes, just like that. Hold that pose. I want to get all those lovely curves just right. <laughs> Filled with messages, despair, and strange occurrences. But none of that really matters, as long as the painter can get the materials he needs to create that perfect piece. The one that will put him on the map once again. Sorry I haven't written in a while. I've been swarmed with work. I gotta tell you, your last letter was... troubling, to say the least. I just can't believe she would set fire to your old paintings. Why would she do that? The Lady in Black especially? That was your tribute to her, wasn't it? I don't know what to tell you except to get her some professional help pronto. You could probably talk to someone as well. With all that's happened, I'm sure it would do you some good. To destroy his tribute is unimaginable. But even worse, to instill self-doubt into his work. Well, he can't have that. No matter what we did, the fireplace just wasn't enough to warm this room. Don't be scared. It's just a book, Bertie. It only takes one painting. It needs to be done. This is fine. This is good. The, these are great conditions. I can finish it. I can. I will. I need to. For all our sakes. For our family. For our family? Or just for you. Go on, tip the scales. What does matter more? One's ambition for greatness, or family? Or maybe the painter's ambition for greatness is for his family, whether they know it or not. Prosthesis snatchers, insatiable bastards. Can't afford a new one. Why the damn leg? The rats speak, you know, in the walls. And so does she. Marital issues are normal, it happens. What's most important is completing the paintings to get it right for once. It's never right. How can two people who once loved each other so fully, so profoundly, drift so far apart? My husband barely speaks to me anymore. He just slithers in and out of his study, obsessively working on one veiled painting after another. He won't even sleep with me anymore. I can tell he's disgusted by me. The look he gave me the other day. That pathetic, hurtful look. A combination of shame, guilt, and repulsion. <laughs> I've come to realize that I've become a monster in my husband's eyes. It feels 
like nothing a woman should ever experience. Still, being the good wife that I am, I decided to realize my husband's fantasy. If he thinks me a monster, I will sure as hell act the part. After such a claim to be belittled by critics, laughed out of the galleries in such a way, they don't know what the painter's been through, especially under these conditions. The thought alone that the most beautiful piece of art doesn't have my name on it is killing me. So, will you marry me? You can't fight against her, or this mansion. The only thing to do is finish the painting, to find the right materials. First, I looked for a canvas. Not just any canvas. I had to find a knife. Not one of those bread ones. It needed to be as sharp as a razor. So I used a razor, in fact, and then carefully flayed the skin. Booze helped keep my hand steady. Only the most beautiful piece of art can bring this magnum opus to life. Locked away in his workshop all day, every day. Tensions grow inside the home. Mates come and go, resign, rehire, resign, rehire. Not to mention the effect on the marriage and the daughter. He's not a drunkard, it was only to calm his hand, to help him sleep and over-exaggeration. You keep the fire in your office just to stop me, don't you? You hate me that much? Was it just for heat or as a repellent? The painter knew about his wife's fear of fire, but lit them anyway. But she would lock the doors. If you're so afraid of fire, why would you block the only means of escape? Finish it! I need to fight the darkness. From broken stools and cups sticking to tables, the maids are just lazy. It's not like it's a hard job, it's time to get a new one. Ass up today. I'm resigning from work at this house. I think I don't have to explain reasons. Paint needs texture. Something to help it stick to the canvas and really stand out. We have just the thing. I thought it would be harder. It should be harder. Bones shouldn't break so easily. Texture gives a painting depth, an extra layer. It's vital, but first we need to prep the materials. I needed to remove the flesh from the bone. At first I was lost as to how, but then I sawed it off with a handsaw, boiled it, then put the bone in a mortar. I had to get one, obviously. This was not something I'd done before. Finally, I mixed the dust with some white paint. It made for a lovely undercoat. Hate, even now, lost alone. You deserve it, a grave for you. Finish it. Their life started to fall apart. Everything he touched turned to rot. 
Now for the paint itself, something with colour. We can always source the materials from the same place. And death sprouts a new life on the canvas. Blood is sticking out of water. Good, solid undercoat. A primer that will hold it all together so it doesn't rot. The house is sick. All the rats, the world is breaking around us. Everything he touches breaks. And she knows it. I can certainly understand that you are upset, and I have nothing but sympathy for your wife and yourself. I must categorically state that I do not wish to receive any further correspondence from you in this matter. Any skin graft procedure is extremely complicated and inherently associated with the risk of failure. Having stated that, I assure you that me and my colleagues at St. Anne have made every effort to ensure a positive outcome for your wife. Personally speaking, I believe we have done the best job possible considering the extent of tissue damage. You are, of course, entitled to your opinion, and I can certainly understand your disappointment. What I do not understand is how you seem to think writing hateful letters to me or my fellow doctors will ameliorate the situation. Everything changed after the department store fire. She was never the same, the scars. She wasn't the person he married anymore. She can't even play music anymore. But one thing a painter is good at is fixing. Talk to me. Why won't you talk to me? You promise. You deserve this. All of it. All of it. This solves nothing. It never has. It never will. Look at him, wading through ashes. Such determination. Such blindness. Island floaters. They clog the drains. Oh, fur in the water. No baths for me. She needs to be fixed. If I am to be honest, I can't say your letter was unexpected. Numerous colleagues have informed me that you had previously sought their advice in this matter, and while it is perfectly understandable for a patient to demand a second opinion, I would think 16 concurring opinions would be enough. Still, out of respect for you and your wife, I have examined the case thoroughly, and I have to concur with my colleagues. Involuntary muscle spasms are not uncommon with patients who have suffered burns as severe as your wife did. What you refer to as a freakish grin, or an unnerving yelp, though many would find such expressions hurtful, could indeed be manifestations of nerve damage. This thing, this family, won't work if you keep undermining me. It will break apart. Alcohol helped, and staying away from her helped. Keeping a good distance, but the paintings are just not the same anymore. He can't paint like he used to. Not with all this added noise. They just don't understand. all your fault. You put more and more locked doors between us, but it's my drinking that ruins the family? <laughs> the music was used to help with the paintings, to give inspiration and guidance in his work, but without it... In the end, this was the only instrument she could play. The only music this family could accept. When you work your whole life towards something, you can't just throw it away. You need to hold on to it. Continue to grow and show just how good you are despite everything else. To show the critics that they are wrong. I'm not like her. I won't let go. I won't let my passion decay. I can't. Never. I will finish it. This is 
who I am. Without it, I'm broken. I have to finish it. All right, let's try this again. Finally managed to play a little. If banging on the keys awkwardly counts as playing. I won't lie. It drives me insane not to have full control of my fingers. In any case, I was promptly berated by my loving husband, who said I should be resting. I know he means well. But how will I ever get better if I don't work at it? The worst thing is, I could swear I smelled liquor on his breath. Oh, God, please. Not this again. A drunken husband, unsupportive, a waste of talent. Losing his mind. Undercoat. The painting needs an undercoat. I needed a jar and a plastic tubing. I siphoned gas before. I knew how it was done. I stuck the tube in a vein and sucked on it until blood filled my mouth. Then put the tube in the jar and it just kept coming. The taste of copper haunted me the entire night. Why didn't I think of a syringe? I hate even now, lost, alone, hopeless, you always will be. A grotesque misunderstanding. Finish it. It can be hard work working on such a twisted subject as the painter, and while this lighthouse seems like the perfect place to write this story, it can't help but make your skin crawl. So, I'm here. For a place belonging to a posh-ass agency, this is weird. If they wanted to have a decor that corresponds with story, they succeeded. It's dark, there are rats and it's weird paintings. <laughs> Not gonna lie, I felt like it was some fucked up experiment. Especially since the man called to check if I'm working soon after I entered. <laughs> I heard a strange noise when I was about to start writing. But it turned out that it were only rats. I think. I thought I saw later. I called to let him know I'm here. He always cheers me up. Watching over everyone, the painter, the writer, who else has the Queen of Rats helped? I'm scared. Mom, it's night. I think you just had a bad dream. Everything will be okay in the morning. I imagine the lighthouse gets lonely, but come on. It's you who wanted to go there. No, you don't understand. It's dark. It's awful, and I can't write. Everything is... Hello? Hello? Fuck. Now that's no way to greet your muse. What your surprise? Creation isn't pretty. 
You pushed a human being into the world, and now you need to do the same with a book. I'm here to help you with that. How? How? She asks. <laughs> the same way I helped the painter, the musician, and the actor. All you have to do is choose. Your voice will be heard. It won't. It never is. And now, with my help, it's possible. Do you choose to use it? Say it. I do. I choose your help. Then, it is done. Hello? Oh, thank God you're okay. What happened? Uh, what do you mean? I, uh... You were scared, and the call was cut off, and... Oh, that? That's nothing. The generator died. It's fine now. Oh. Okay. I guess that's good. How do you feel? You sounded upset. I'm worried. I'm good. Mm, but... I'm good, son. It's as you said, I'm exactly in the place I wanted to be. Are you? Yes, I'm sure. I need to get back to work. Good night. Love you. A sudden change of heart and a concerned son. The book needs to be written, and with this new help it will be. The painter's story will be finished. To be the child of two great creatives can be a nightmare. The expectations set upon you from a young age. The prodigal child trained by her father to be an artist like himself. Someone to pick up his brush when it's all said and done. A wild temper, but it was only for her best interest in mind. She could achieve so much. He had to be critical of her drawings. How else would she learn? How else would she improve? Her mother, on the other hand, trained her daughter to play the piano, to take over her legacy. The fire saw an end to that. Is it wrong to want an ear? Somebody to teach. Enough of the childish drawings, it needs to be right. She saw it all, the fighting, the sadness, and even that moment. The victim of the painter's outburst, caught in the middle of a waning relationship of her parents. What more could she have done? No leaving the workshop until it's finished! I had to move most of the dolls out of her room. It was getting ridiculous. You can't just throw gifts at her whenever you feel guilty for whatever it is you feel guilty for.
To lose a parent so young is horrible, but to see it in that manner? Unimaginable. What? What's so funny? You beat me again. <laughs> Sometimes I wonder why I even bother. My little bird loved this game. I need some peace and quiet to work. Is that too much to ask? This house is not a playground! Do I get my little bird? Okay, we'll buy it. It will look great on the fireplace, don't you think, honey? He was a loving father before the accident. He tried his best given the circumstances, and that's what matters. I know she adores that toy, but I don't know. Something about it is very unsettling. Maybe it's the way she plays with it. She's not a happy child, it shows. as a child's hair. Losing a child to have her taken away, how is he supposed to cope? Finishing the painting is the only way. Isolation and loneliness are no place for a child. Maybe she's better off. Could the Queen of Rats be responsible for the misfortunes of this house? She knows the weakest parts of a person and how to exploit it. so sweet. I could eat you right up. Be an example. Finish it! Finish.
This was a special brush, like a horsehair brush, but different. At that point, I hesitated. Will this really work? Fuck it. I was already halfway through, and besides, it's not like I can just put it all back and forget the whole thing. I hate you, even now, lost, alone, hopeless. You have always been alone, you always will be. Hope, a grave error. The painting is nearing completion, only a few more materials are needed before it's perfect to make this whole thing worth it. He simply wasn't enough. Everything I do, I do to stop thinking. To stop the questions. Is this really the house I know? Where am I? What, what is behind that door? What is behind me? The questions are worse than anything that can actually happen. I loved him the most when he lost himself. They don't understand. They don't see tasteless malcontents. And so our agreement, although fruitful, must come to an end. We seek someone who understands modern art a little bit better, who is able to engage with it. And you, sir, don't seem to be that person anymore. I hate it. Everyone hates it. I have to make it perfect. I need to start practicing. I don't care what he thinks about it. I'm not myself without music. Neglecting his wife and child, obsessed with his passion and the need for perfection. The need to create. Instead, all he created was chaos and destruction. And the first casualty was his mind. Only I could help him. Only I can help you. A creative's mind is their toolbox, and without it, you lose your means to work. I needed something to add the, how should I put it, final touches, a finger. I needed a finger. Chopped it off, easier than sawing a leg. Washed it, dried it in an oven, fell asleep, almost burned it. Will I manage to pull this off? One step closer to the masterpiece, we have all but one ingredient. I used to hate you, even now you must feel. Lost, alone, hopeless finally realized you always will be the quintessential part there is still a way finish it only one thing left to do find it in yourself and finish it finish it finish it. just finish it just a little bit more and it will be finished finished Nothing will stop me from finishing it. Finish. 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 Finish it. There is no other way. Rats in the walls, eyes in the darkness, watching over the painter, seeing his progress, servants of the queen. Right. Just one more can. And be ready. Look at you! Who's a dead boy? Who's a dead boy? You are. You mind explaining this to me? I know what it is. Care to tell me how it got in my workshop? Stop lying! We both know it couldn't have gotten there on its own. I nested in his emptiness. Why do they try to restrict him and doubt him and his abilities? He deserves his chance, only his wife can help him. Why don't 
Don't you answer me! I need something, anything. Some old notes will suffice. I know you're dead, but we both know you're not really gone. Without you, it won't be finished! Hickory dickory dock. The mouse ran up the clock. The clock struck one. The horde ran down. Hickory dickory dock. <laughs> the house is sick. He is sick. Such a delicious despair. You can feel it, can't you? Why won't you help me? You are a monster. Embrace it. You're mine. You know, even though you are my rival and the source of all my sorrows, you're also the only one I can still talk to, the only one who will listen. I'm not sure if it's funny or merely pathetic. <laughs> Probably both. Hey there, princess. What? Oh, <laughs> this is daddy's mess. Whenever daddy's hurting, this helps the hurt go away. No, don't touch that. Oh God, I'm so, wait, I'm sorry, I, I'm sorry. The wife can still help even after what she did. The painter needs materials and she can help with that. What is taking so long? Open this fucking door. I need to go, open up. Hell is, oh God, no, 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 no. What have you done? No. I finally figured it out. And it's all thanks to you. You've showed me that there's no other way. Your sad smile confirms what should have been obvious. We will not speak again. Someone had to bear witness. I couldn't just look at my own work. Art and the artist needed an audience, a critical eye on things. I knew what I had to do. I gouged it, scooped it up like ice cream, felt like a butcher, a monster. At least there was to come something beautiful from all this filth. After what she did to herself in the tub, the most beautiful piece of art can become the magnum opus. Skin for the canvas, bone and blood for the paint. And she can now watch on. You left so quietly, secretly. When I realized it was too late. Do you see? I tried to do my best. I tried. I did. Fix it. I tried to cope. I tried to be there for you both. How was I supposed to do it without you? Something to calm my nerves. Broke. Falling apart, fighting the helplessness, and losing and losing. Take it back. But we were happy for a while. It couldn't last. We had it. A 
short, sweet time together. I could have done it. We could have been happy. It was like a curse. Primal. Angry. Blind. Ever since the accident. Devoured by forces out of our control. What will you say about it? How will you end his story? I used to hate you. I think, even now, I still might. I know how you must feel. Lost, alone, hopeless. You probably deserve it. The one precious thing you ever truly desired. You will never finish it. Yes! That's it! <laughs> it's beautiful. Perfect. Just like I always imagined. What? What is this? I, I don't understand. No. Stop it. Please! Close. This time, I almost had it. An endless loop of failures destined to try again and again to create his masterpiece. Once a loving family struck by disaster when the department store fire happened, his wife was never the same, she couldn't be fixed. Unable to fix his wife, it drove him mad, unable to paint like he once did. Taking his frustrations out on his daughter and distancing himself from his wife led to her eventual death. Unable to bear the thought that her husband loved his paintings more than her, losing the will to continue on. But the painter was resourceful, using the remains as materials for his one perfect piece, but to no avail. The painter's mind is twisted, not every magnum opus is the same, for example his self-portrait. Not understanding what he has done wrong, but believes that all of the suffering he and his family have gone through was necessary to achieve perfection in his art. Or the opus of family. The painter's true peace inspired by guilt, that no amount of painting or acclaim will bring back his family, deciding instead to end the cycle with a fire, destroying his sick house and sick mind in the process. But with all that said, it's time to restart, to try over, finish it this time, to create his magnum opus. But first, we need a suitable canvas. A story completed, a job well done. The Rat Queen will be pleased, but there is more to tell. Maybe deep in his heart, he longed for them, for any presence other than his own. My palate was sated, nostrils stimulated, standing, venerated. It was never true, was it? Even before the debts of desperation, when the book became a hit, I already knew what I lost. The book was finished thanks to the Queen of Rats, but at the cost of a son it's quite the price. But the writer has returned to this lighthouse, ten years later to save her son, to break the pact. It's, it's not possible at the moment. You know where I'm at, sad man? 
I'm at your precious lighthouse. Yes, I am aware of that. Don't interrupt me. I'm at the lighthouse, and I know how to hurt your precious queen. I know how to break that pact. So either you bring him back, or I'll show you what I can do with words. I will warn you that it is a fruitless endeavor. I don't give a fuck about your warnings. I will destroy her. I will get him back. I will write my own story. Thought you got me? Well, guess what? I can write without you. I always could. Let's get this over with! When I was a child, I used to lay in bed late at night, staring at the ceiling, listening to my father scream. Scream at my mother, scream at yet another failed masterpiece. Finally, just scream out into the darkness. It became my lullaby. And even when they took me away, the screams followed. I was once told that insanity runs in my family. It's time to make it stop. All growing up, the daughter returns to her old home, filled with bad memories of a divided house and marriage. Even though decades have passed, the remnants of her father remains inside. My beloved. I've been thinking about what happened. I've been trying to understand. My dear, <laughs> help me. I just don't understand. Why would you do it? Did you feel like there was no other way? Tell me, God damn it! What did I do to deserve this? I did my best. You know I did, I gave you everything. Selfish fucking whore! Why would you do this to, to us? Not much is known about the fate of the painter. Only that his daughter has come back after all this time to claim her inheritance. Presumably alluding to his eventual death. But it is clear that despite consistent recommendation from friends to seek professional help after the death of his wife, it unfortunately seems to have fallen on deaf ears. But for the daughter, there are questions about her parents that she needs answered after all this time away, and a few memories that she needs to face head on. No! That's not how it went. Maybe... No, that's not right. Oh, God damn it! Why can't I remember? I told you never to come down here! A broken man, looking to recite the music his wife once played for him while he did his paintings, not even allowing his own daughter to be near her mother's favourite instrument. Anger, sadness, grief. Her father's presence is not the only thing that remains. His little bird. His little rat. 
The Queen of Rats still watches over the house, feeding on the sadness left over in the home. Huh. I don't remember that being there. I can hear you out there. Please, please help me. It hurts. Oh, it hurts so much. I can't take it anymore. Mm. Yes. Thank you. It's so good to feel that there's still beauty in this world. Music was the only thing that seemed to numb her pain after the department store fire. A reminder that there was still beauty in the world even when everything seemed so dark. What the hell did you do? Oh, you didn't mean to. Well, that makes it all better, doesn't it? It'll just magically unbreak because you didn't mean to. Go on, get out of here. Go to your room and break shit in there. Just take all your toys and smash them, one by one, and keep at it. Maybe you'll finally get good at something. But it was clear for the daughter of two such talented parents, it's only natural that she would be talented herself. Take her mother, for example. From the age of three, she realized her passion, the feeling of control and the ability to make the piano do whatever she told it to. And the daughter did show promise, with the right guidance. Hey there. Oh, come on, don't be afraid. It won't bite. Here, try for yourself. No, no, that, that's not quite right. <sighs> Still not right there. Get your crayons. Hmm. That's actually not bad. Look at you, young lady. It looks like talent runs in the family. Her father wished for her to be able to achieve what he could not. To be able to express the deepest parts of herself onto the canvas. But only when it was doing? done his way. You're much too old for that childish nonsense. Finally, are you ready to embrace true art? Oh, the summer trees. So green and vibrant and full of life but also young and inexperienced. Let's try to find them a more poignant season, where they are wiser and have some stories to tell. There is more to art than just putting paint onto a canvas. There needs to be thought and real feeling as well. It needs to tell a story just by looking at it. For example, we can have a warm autumn scene, but the man living there would need shelter from the elements. Now, let's show the elements in all their glory. The house not looking as pristine as it did before, showing that what we take for granted is fragile and temporary. While man passes, nature endures. But nature is also cruel, and at times tragic. But as the painter points out, a beautiful tragedy is always better than an unremarkable existence. In his own way... I believe he meant well. He wanted me to excel, hoping that when the time came, I would succeed where he failed. Avoid his mistakes. God knows he made plenty of those. If there was one word to describe this family, I think the tragedy fits quite well. You're sick! You're insane! You're not thinking straight! You're right. I am sick. I'm sick of you not being there for us. We need you. I need you. 
When was the last time you slept with me? <laughs> Christ, when was the last time you even touched me? Do you know what that does to me? Do you know that my own husband is disgusted with me? But excuse me if I've been too busy working my ass off trying to provide for this family. But no, you're right. It's much more important to whisper sweet nothings in your ear. <laughs> you call that work? You, you lock yourself in there for hours, days. You, you come out looking like shit, stinking of booze and stale piss. Do you even realize how much your daughter is scared of you? Do not bring her into this. Don't you dare. All I do, I do for her. <laughs> you keep telling yourself that. I'm sure it makes it a hell of a lot easier. It's hard to forget the day she was taken from her father following the death of her mother. He did love her in his own way, but maybe it was a miracle. Princess, Princess, wake up. I need you to get dressed real quick. There are men coming, some very bad men. They want to take you away from me, but I won't let them. We won't let them, will we? Yes. Now I remember, throughout all the chaos and misery, in his own flawed and misguided way, he did love her after all. His way of expressing it was a different matter altogether. I, grasping at the remains of my sanity, declare this to be my last will and testament. I hereby deem all my previous wills just as worthless as the shallow husks calling themselves my friends and associates. To my agent, Thomas Caldwell, I bestow the hellish vermin that infest my home, praying that they will gnaw away at him endlessly, bleeding him dry just like he did to me. To my publisher, Liam Brickstone, I bequeath the flames that consume the love of my life in hopes they will devour him, along with the wretched whore and the squealing bastard he calls a family. To my lawyer, James Jerome Sadler, I pass on whatever illness has rotted my brain and soul away so that he can feel just as empty and useless as he was to me. To any other parasites that come crawling out of the woodwork, I leave nothing. To hell with all of you. Finally, to my beloved daughter, I leave all my earthly possessions for what they're worth. I hope they will inspire you to realize your true potential. The final, most precious gift, however, is not mine to give. You will have to discover that on your own. I believe in you, as I always have. The painter had been criticized many times for his morbid view of things, such as the grotesque drawings of Little Red Riding Hood that was meant for a children's book. And for a child, it can be scarring, even if he didn't mean it. And yet, she felt that the evil witch was lurking nearby. As her eyes adjusted to the darkness, she saw something moving in the corner of her eye, and yet she did not dare to move, for she knew that that would be the end of her. <gasps> the princess heard a fearsome growl. The witch had unleashed her familiar, the hellhound. The monster sniffed at the air, its perky ears wary of even the slightest sound. The princess remained motionless, letting the monster pass. There was a stillness in the air. The princess breathed a sigh of relief. <clears throat> princess, keep looking at me. For a moment, it seemed like the worst was behind her. And yet she knew that it was not over. There was still danger nearby, waiting for her slightest move. Frozen in terror, she kept looking straight ahead. Suddenly, she heard a terrifying cackle. It was the evil witch herself, 
the wretched thing despised beauty and innocence, for she had neither. The hag was near, just outside the view, but our heroine didn't dare to look. She had to keep her head straight, lest she be cursed by the witch's foul magic. She could almost feel the chilling touch of the witch's hand at her neck. She felt the sudden urge to run away, but fought it with all her will, for she knew that was precisely what the witch would have wanted. And then, just like that, the chill was gone. She saw a glimmer of light over the horizon. The sun was almost upon her. It was almost dawn. It was almost over. And there. The princess stood triumphant in the sun, smiling as she... Wait, that's not right. Her face. Why is she still... scared? Oh, God. I didn't mean to... Princess, I am so sorry. It's not that he was cruel. It's just that, to him, reality was just a pale reflection of art. He was blind to the world, unless it was translated to him through a canvas. The horrible memories that haunt the daughter even to this day are found throughout the house as drawings from her childhood. A strange black marking can be found on the drawing, and when rearranged correctly... It's... me. But what does it mean? There has to be more to this. Self-reflection can be hard, and for the painter it would have been harder than most. To see how your own daughter saw you and your wife before she was taken. But now the only thing that you can do is give her what she deserves most. I don't know what I expected to find. A farewell note? A final will? What I found was an apology. Expressed in the only language he ever truly knew. At that moment, I could finally see my father for what he was. A man driven insane with sadness and guilt. Trapped in this house. A nightmarish echo chamber of past mistakes and tragedies. It was this house. A place beyond hope, beyond redemption. I knew what I had to do. I had given up trying to understand my father a long time ago. But I could finally forgive him. Princess, what have you got there? Oh, that's so lovely, sweetie. But why pink? Much like her father, this house holds many secrets and the outcomes are not always the same. Acceptance, and most importantly, forgiveness is as good an outcome as one could hope for the daughter. But continued resentment is also quite possible. To not be able to look beyond what happened all those years ago. But even worse, it's the secrets held behind the drawings. What is this supposed to... Wait. The lines are... 
Now I see it. Like you knew I would. I had to dig deep to uncover what my father really wanted me to find. But in the process, I realized what he was trying to tell me. This house was nothing but a tomb. There was nothing left for me here. No answers. No solace. No closure. My true inheritance lay within. And then, just like that, it finally happened. For the first time in my life, I saw the world through my father's eyes. I was once told that insanity runs in my family. Let it run. Destined to relive her father's mistakes. But as she did say, they did say that madness ran in her family. And while one chapter ends, another needs to be written for this book to be finished. To finally complete the work. This is another story of a troubled creative. Never able to forget what was once lost. The actor. The first true test of an actor is to build their character, connect memories, dreams and fears. Who are you? Where are you? Through exploring the ship we can find your motivation and play the part. Why are we here? They asked. Although they already knew. To build the character. To act. That was what they did for all of their lives. They did it for love, did it because of a burning passion, a flame within them that wanted to be set free. And above all, they did it to run, to forget, to be anyone else, everyone else, to keep the one story that mattered, the one that really happened, unused and intact, a secret. They couldn't even recall it now. They would, though, walking the corridors of this strange ship and the ship from their past, remembering their first characters and why they played them, remembering the borrowed bravery of the pirate crew, finding out who they were before they learned to put on all the masks. In their time, they played the parts of many men, observed others, and were observed wore the characters as if they were second skins, layers upon layers of people who wore their face. Now it was time to shed these skins, to meet themselves again, to remember, to choose. It is kind of the director to section off much of the ship for the actor to get into character, but that does mean that he is alone on a ship while being afraid of the ocean in hindsight maybe not such a good idea yeah yeah i know you've told me a million times how much you hate the sea and i'm telling you this gig is just too good to pass up this particular ship has tight security procedures 
You see, in the past there have been incidents of unwanted individuals making their way aboard the vessel. This causes all sorts of problems if people think that they can get on the cruise for free. Well, it's bad for business. So, from this point forth, it's increased security and no stowaways will be tolerated. Secret admirers and glowing reviews. It comes down to having the ability to completely inhabit your character so you and the very things that make you a person completely disappear. That's the secret. Guy's got a reputation. Makes his actors jump through hoops before he even lets them on the set. Supposed to be some new method of building the character. Bunch of artsy fartsy bullshit if you ask me. Just go with it. Guy doesn't take no for an answer. So what if the guy's a little nuts? He's a director. It comes with a job. I mean, what's he gonna do? Kill ya? Nobody knows the ins and outs of the business like the director. He knows what he wants and exactly what he needs to do to get it out of his actors. Some things are better left deep down. Why should it matter who you were? What matters is who you will become. Wake up, Mr. Hardy. We've got to get out of this godforsaken prison before we rot. It's an escape. When you play a different character, you don't have to be yourself anymore. All of your concerns, worries, and stresses of your everyday life are not the concerns of your character, so it's easier to cope. Plus, it's always a bonus if you can be a little more heroic than normal. Are we, are we really going? Lily, I, I... That's Captain Baines to you, Mr. Hardy. Remember the name, Quartermaster, or I'll have you walk the plank. Being adventurous can sometimes get you in trouble, but... If the character is brave, you can always deal with it, head on. There she is, Mr. Hardy. The fastest vessel ever built, ready to set sail for the land of the flame. I don't see any sails. Shh. We must make our way aboard, quietly. Avast, Mr. Hardy. Too many of them scurvy dogs to take head on. Lily, I want to go home. Quartermaster, steal yourself. Be your heart soaked in doubt, or be there a fire burning within. In the land we've seen behind shut eyes, the one of bright shores caressed by tide, where there's no pain, no fear, no fury, no lies, there we shall stand tall, our hearts full of pride. If your dreams are bold, and by no man bound, if your soul is strong, unlike any other, able to build walls or tear to the ground, then yours is this world, my little brother. Lily was always the braver of the two, and more adventurous. And not just her role, but Lily herself. She fits the role of captain, the fearless leader. But the quartermaster is also very important, since the quartermaster needs to make sure the crew get to where they need to be, not to mention making sure there's plenty of rum and food for everybody. And while the captain sometimes gets cross with the quartermaster, it's only because she cares.
Look what I found, Mr. Hardy. This chart will lead us away from peril and into safe harbor. You shouldn't play with strangers. She wouldn't like that. She doesn't like it when you play with anyone but her. Stowaways cause all types of issues for the crew, the company, not to mention the safety of the passengers and their belongings. This bottle do. Hurry, we have to secure it. They'll be here any moment. Lily, I'm scared. You should be scared. You know what happens if they find us. They'll send us back. With a journey comes risks, sometimes serious ones. But for the siblings, it was a necessary risk. After all, they had dreamt of it for years. We are now entering the eastern part of the borough. This particular area holds a special place in my heart as I grew up not far from here myself. A few things have changed, it seems, for better or worse. I see children playing in the streets, not a care in their little minds. If it wasn't for their shabby clothes, one could almost forget about the crushing poverty that plagues so many of the local families. But what do we have here? A boy, sitting on a park bench, alone. Perhaps he won't mind if we pick his brain a bit. Good morning, young man. What's your name? Good morning, young man. What's your... Good morning. Good man. Your morning. What's your... Now, they knew a part of the answer to the director's question, before the world told them what to be. They were stowaways, hidden deep in the entrails of the beast that was the ship. They hid and fought for survival, losing more and more of themselves. Now they had to descend again into the entrails of the beast that was their own mind find what they lost. It was still there, buried, hidden away, locked in a vault. A prison of themselves. Deep down, there was only instinct. A need and an act. Hunger and violence. And was there also a choice? It's good to have faith in somebody that you care about, somebody that has your back, someone you idolize. She will always be there for him. Yeah, uh, could we take this again? Uh, <laughs> there's something wrong with the picture. I, I think you must have moved. You just don't look quite yourself. When chasing dreams, we often find ourselves in a nightmare. The only way to get away to start their journey was to get onto a ship, to finally get away from everything. It should have been easy, sneak on board and find a nice warm place to sleep. And they found that, in the cargo hold, but the crew just kept searching, making it almost impossible to stay quiet to themselves. Tragedy strikes at the heart. Despair consumes the soul. A life crumbles. How were they supposed to know that they would lock down the food? I mean, it wasn't much, a few apples here, a piece of bread there. But after, they rationed the food, guarded the storage. It all started to fall apart. Get up, Quartermaster. What's done is done. No use crying. We need to venture forth and find some fresh supplies. Here, take this. It will help you find your strength. 
The way the ship works is all very confusing. In fact, how they even make it work is a mystery. There were so many gears and cogs in the machinery room and nowhere close to being as comfortable as the cargo room. One suffers for another. Another takes their place. The machine goes on. It warms the heart. It feeds the soul. It makes the world so bright. So bright. A stolen flame burns strong. Burns quick. A stolen flame burns out. The flame of a person is otherwise referred to as the soul. To bring a character to life you need to create that flame and bring it into yourself in order to have that person come to life. Would that work with a real soul I wonder? No food, just paper. Don't lose hope quartermaster, let's keep on looking. There's no food anywhere and running out of options, but perhaps there is someone that could help. Looks like the rats got to it before us. What, what was that? Shh, we're not alone here. Ah, oh, it stinks. But it looks like someone took a bite. Or something. Come, let's not wait for it to come back. The open oceans can be rough. You never know what's around the corner. And something has the animals spooked and the guards are battening down the hatches. This storm is going to be a big one. Look, there's something there. Look over there. Can't you see it? This isn't what I saw. You have to be. We're out it. on the edge of the world, Mr. Hardy. Nothing is as it seems. This one's empty too. We need to keep looking. Lily, I mean, Captain, there's something out there. In the dark. Hush now. Stay behind me. I won't let anything happen to you. The caring big sister and the scared, hungry younger brother. They had no food and a storm was approaching, but little mattered as long as they had each other. But there was something, or someone, watching over them. Leave it, Mr. Hardy. We're not that desperate yet. James, I said leave it. Any cause must be paid when one destroys the balance. grows full. You take what's not yours. Your heart grows cold. You feed on misery. Your soul grows weak. I want to 
once saw this boy drown a baby rat in the gutter. He said it made him feel better. But that didn't make it all right. I think he was broken. There is a treasure to be found on the ship for the captain and her quartermaster. And what is it that they would do with all their spoils? It's no good. We'll never find any food. James, look at me. And it's all my fault. I said, look at me. I am Captain Baines, the Black Wanderer, the Slayer of the Cyclops, the Seeker of the Flame. I will see us through this. Don't you ever doubt me. Nothing is as it seems on the ship. What was once fresh is now rotten. Once available, now taken. The silly children didn't realize that the only one that truly sits over the treasure is the queen. Maybe there's some food here. Come on, we have to go. Oh. Did you hear that? This way. James, run. You think you can survive without me? Watch out! Something's coming! We need to keep moving. They had each other. You are alone. Solidarity can be freeing, but the comfort of others is rarely shunned. There is more to this boat than you think. On one hand, the actor is building his character, finding the flame, if you will. But underneath it all is a story of two siblings fighting to survive. But every story has a beginning, some more tragic than others. There was life before the ship. A reason for their escape. They didn't dare look back. But their past fueled them for years. They harnessed it without remembering. They transformed fear, anger, and despair into art. The art was called outstanding, haunting, unforgettable. But they did forget. They did their best to forget. And when they weren't looking, their past entangled them, bound them, their roots suffocated them, pulled them under, away from the air and the light. They had to cut them away. Only then could they be truly free. The Black Wanderer. It was Lily's favorite film. Their father owned a theater and he had heard around that the Americans love this pirate movie. So, let's make the most of this. Having more screenings means more people in seats, and then the theatre can thrive. Come, faithful servant, for tonight we brew a ghoulish concoction, the world's strangest stew. Seasoned by sadness, burnt from within, ravaged by madness, Rotten with sin. Torn up by conflict. Ravaged by war. Flawed on the surface. Warped to its core. Hollowed by longing. Hardened by loss. Once slick and polished. Has lost all its gloss. Look at it bubble. Look at it shake. 
the beast. It's awake. The extra screenings were ideal for Lily since she could watch it over and over again. She would sneak onto the balcony and watch it from above the audience. There were even complaints from the viewers since there were noises coming from up there. They thought the thing was going to fall on their heads. Now that would be bad for business. Look, Jimmy. Father's screening the Black Wanderer. They only had their father now. Once a soldier in the British Army, relieved of duty due to injuries sustained on the field of battle. He even won the Silver War Badge. But things weren't all that nice at home. Little scum. You were always bad luck. A blight upon this family. A blackened heart. Uprooted by tragedy. Skewered by... Pain. That's all you've ever given me. That's all you were ever good for. They lost their mother the day that James was born. Life for a life, a death for a death. His father never really forgave him for that. She gave everything for you. Proved that it was worth it. That you weren't a mistake. useless no good to anyone it's like i was never there it would have been better if i was never there it wasn't out of the blue see she had had pregnancy issues with lily quite a few complications in fact but the pains were worse with james the doctor assured them that it would be okay When the world becomes too cruel, we look for a place to hide. The dark can be many things. It can be refuge. Or it can be hell. It is whatever you make it. The dark can be a silent place. Silence can be empty. Or can speak volumes. It is whatever you make it. The dark can be a lonely place. Solitude can be a sentence. Or can be a companion. It is whatever you make it. Sometimes it's better to hide to let the dark in. Oh, this coming! Quick! Get in! No, please! I said, get in! Hush! It's already started. The abuse from their father, in many ways, was a loveless upbringing for James. Aside from his sister, he idolized Lily and became dependent on her, the only source of love that he ever knew. Now you write about their past. This is where you come in. Go on, pick it up. Tables have turned, Quartermaster. Curse you and your mutinous puppets. I will not make this easy for you. If I am to meet my doom today, it will be by your hands, by your action. Play your part, villain. I'm waiting. late to build your character, boy. You wanted to be like me? Shoot! <laughs> what are we to you? Mere playthings? Play your part. 
You thought you could be me? You will always be just a scared little boy. <sighs> Lily, are you all right? Lily, Lily! <gasps> Lily, I thought you were gone. That's because I was. Well, she is. What? Who I was a moment ago is no more. Now, I can become someone else. It was easier to become someone else. Your issues and the stresses of life no longer mattered. Not if you're a brave pirate captain or a loyal quartermaster. You were something else entirely. Something more. No one understands them. No one will understand you. Watch. This is the best part. I know. Henceforth, I shall be Captain Baines, the Black Wanderer. But Captain Baines isn't a girl. Steady your tongue, Quartermaster. I can be whoever I choose to be. If your little mind says otherwise, then to the depths with it. They were dreamers, wishing for something better for themselves. To be real adventurers together. To get away from their father. My brother. He was always there, following in my footsteps, silent, smiling sadly, like a warm shadow, always there, but never really present. Sometimes, when darkness fell across town, we'd sneak out of the house, he'd look up into the night sky, Watching the stars, but never really seeing them. What he really saw was a thousand souls on fire. His eyes would light up. The stars were already there. At that moment, I knew he had it in him to make a thousand hearts bleed, a thousand heads turn thousand eyes weep my brother the silent dreamer dreaming that a day would come when we could leave it all behind the journey of a lifetime a light on the horizon a flame to call his own yes he had it in him to make a thousand souls burn. Make them feel alive. Make them live forever. A thousand lives. But never mind. Never mind. There we were, dreaming our souls away into the night sky when we could almost reach out and take it. A cruel shade eclipsed the sun. Our dream was gone. Something else took its place. Something vicious. Something... Oh no. What would the Black Wanderer do now? No. Happens. What if I can't find you? Shh. Listen to my voice. Hold it deep inside, and I will always be there for you. Forever? Forever. As long as they're always with you, they're never truly gone. You are never alone, never in solitude. 
You can even fight back against the monsters because deep down, even though they are scary, they're really just as sad and lost as we are. Father, no, please. Stay out of it, Lily. Why, why can't you just, just leave us alone? You filled the boy's head with nonsense. As if it wasn't useless enough. You're, you're the one who's useless, you cruel, one-eyed freak. What did you call Get me? away from him, you, you monster. A monster like a cyclops, a one-eyed beast attacking the captain and her crew. What would a real pirate do? They would fight back. Father, it's today. I know. I'm going to see you. Did you get anything for James? It's his day too. I... I had to buy something for your mother. That's all I could afford. A birthday overshadowed by a death day. Sometimes it is easier just to be someone else. It... is it over? No, Mr Hardy. It's only just beginning. The book is coming around nicely, two stories told and only two more to complete. The actor is not quite finished, but it will be, and without the help of the Rat Queen. The writer has a son to save after all, and only she knows the thing that would truly hurt her, to destroy her once and for all. So sharp, after all this time. That knife near the bathtub, she knows, using it to taunt the writer. Hi, Mama. What? How? It's been a while, so just wanted to check on you. I... I'm glad you're writing again. You are? Of course. I know you. It's always been the most important thing in your life. That's... I should probably leave you to it. It's been great hearing from you. Wait, don't... Bye. Don't go! The closer you get, the harder that she will fight back. All you can do is cut corners and shock. You think yourself an artist? They had fun. They had fun breaking his bones and kicking him, watching him spit blood. They were proud of themselves. You're mine. You have nothing to say. No voice, no characters, no talent. All your words are empty. Underneath there is only your ego. I made you. You'll never be safe. Keep it. 
I will finish it. Last exhibit, recreation of exhibit opening with piano. At home, Arubarus. After all these years, they still listen to you. The wife is still remembered after all this time, her mementos in this very lighthouse. Her story needs to be told, but that will be the final chapter. I have to finish it. The actor's job is not yet done, he still needs to build his character. The director will be displeased if he doesn't. It's not quite there yet, still some tweaks to be made. Now they knew where they came from. Now they could scream themselves free. One glorious act. And then... Silence. It's only a matter of time before the crew find the stowaways, a young boy and girl. Nothing but thieves stealing the food and rations. They need to be dealt with appropriately. Lily, Captain, I found it. But it's empty. It's all gone. Steady yourself, Quartermaster. Return to the hideout. I'll keep searching on my own. I can help. I, I said go. You and them. Both have no future without me. Go on. Be there for her. Like she was for you. The director knows what's best for the character. It's his film after all. You could even say that he knows better than the actor. The director is the visionary. The actor is simply the tool. Some parts are not to be played. What do they seek? What do you seek? Yourself? Themselves? Why? There is only me. Cheer up. I'm all right. Do not hurt. Do not upset. James was clumsy. They have almost been caught too many times now. It's time for the captain to take charge, to find food for her crew. The quartermaster best rest at the hideout. But the serious danger does lie ahead. He wasn't there to stop them, to help her. It's James's fault. He should have been there. Burn it 
You are mine. They were mine. We were meant to live forever. And I will. I will be forever. I will be. Some stories shouldn't be told. Things that shouldn't be witnessed. What they did, the captain had to do. He has to seek the flame. It's the only way to be together forever. Lily, please come back. I need you. A voice in the darkness. <laughs> That's a funny name. Can you help me find my sister? Someone to give aid. You are all empty. To bring them back together. She's been gone a long time. I'm scared something happened to her. I, I didn't mean to. She told me to go back. No, stop it. It's not true. It's his fault after all. You, you're right. It is my fault. Yes, I can still save her. She can live on forever. Show me the way. I'll do what needs to be done. I'm the captain now. It's time for the quartermaster to be brave and with this new help he will find his captain. But to begin the actor must forge the flame of his character. And nobody likes a Mary Sue, an audience needs to connect to the flaws of the character also. And there are no worse flaws than the seven sins. Gluttony. Sloth. Left adrift in a sea of lethargy, my hands, the devil's playthings, put them to some use. Greed. Of all my riches, I sailed the sea of nothingness. My debt to you, I will repay. Here is my pound of flesh. Lust. Pride. Oh. 
wallowing in a sea of shame. I was never one to serve. But for you, I swallow my pride. And with seven sins comes the seven seas. Lead us, O oh captain. We will follow you across the seven seas. The soul pays its debt. It's just you and me, Captain. Here we are again. You almost had it. <laughs> she lied to me. 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 Roth. The storm was bad. The winds were so strong they lifted a woman from the floor and sent her overboard. The crews perished at sea, losing half of the passengers. People were shocked that such a state-of-the-art cruise sunk to the bottom of the Atlantic. It didn't seem possible. The cause of the tragedy was a fire that broke out in the engine room. The crew worked tirelessly to stop the fire, but once it reached the boiler room, the ship was history. The resulting explosion breached the hull. But what happened after was the hard part. So James, am I correct to assume you live somewhere nearby? Yes. With your family? My sister. Oh, you have a sister, splendid. And what about your parents? Father. Uh, oh, well let's start with your father. He must be proud of such a strapping young lad as yourself. He is not. Uh, well, how about your sister? Is she, um... She's everything. I see. You, you spend a lot of time with your sister. She's always there. And she will be. Forever. Tell me, James. Do you like sitting here in the park? I... I don't know. You don't know? I... I think I do. Out here, I could be anyone. Truly? You can be anyone you want? I... I think I don't need to be. I can play anyone I want. Have I offended you, James? No, I just... You just don't want to talk to me anymore? I... I don't know what I want. They say that the game's trying for games to start. He has really can come true. Are dreams what's really important to you? Mm-hmm. Your dreams can stay with you forever. Now they knew why they feared freedom, why they hid 
flow with the tide and pretended to be one with the void inside them. Now in place of the void, there was a sea. Restless, roaring, terrifying. Once they saw it, once they lit a flame in their soul, there was no turning back, no other way. Again, they felt the eyes of eternity upon them. They were here before. They faced that choice in the past. They felt the stare. Now, for the first time, they stared back. Working so hard to bring something back that you can lose yourself in the process. Do you see now? You tried to fix me. Instead, you broke yourself. Sweet to sweet, bitter to bitter. This place, it sickens me. With all of its clutter and confusion, it is a monument to your weakness. A portrait of your indecision. The wreckage of what never truly was. It is broken. Hollow. Just like you. A life for a life. You tried so hard to bring me back. You crawled out to me from the void. But something else answered. A death for a death. If you wanted to be free, you shouldn't have come back. <laughs> Never strong enough. Poor little Jimmy. Poor, weak, pathetic little Jimmy. Always the victim. Always the burden. An anchor. Dragging me down. I guess I never had a chance, did I? Neither of us did. We never should have lived this long. Forever and a very long time. Sometimes, it's better not to be. To burn away completely. There's no place for me here. Only you. Whoever that is, I hope you'll be brave this time. I don't think I can. I cannot. You, you cannot help me. Not anymore. This was to be my final work. To reclaim what was lost. To let go of the stolen fire. To reignite the true flame. But now the spark. It is almost gone. It is lost. Hopeless. Just like you. A formless man, something that can be molded, turned into anything. A new person, even. The actor is shifting, shedding his skin. This body just doesn't contain one flame. They will be lost forever, and so will you. How many lives have you buried just by merely existing? Existing, but never being. Wouldn't it be better if you just went? Is it time for a change? He can't fix it after all. How many times have I tried? To put the pieces back together. Just to watch them fall apart. Who are we? How long can a man burn before he turns to ash? How could you know? Of all the wasted years, of all the pain it
times when you fail to take control. Look at it. Twisted. Formless. There's no other way. You act on instinct. You see, you react. It's so easy to pull your strings. You hesitate. You look for a better way. Nothing is ever easy. You struggle against the current. You fight against all odds. Ah. In the end, there is no right or wrong. There is only... James! Lily! Ah! James! Listen to me! You have to go! No! I'm not leaving! I'll, I'll find a way to reach you! I know you will! You're strong! Stronger than you know! We'll be together again! No matter how long it takes, I will find you! I will... Their home and theatre burned down one night, resulting in the death of their father. Not much is known about the circumstances of the fire, whether deliberate or accidental. But what mattered most was going on the journey they had always dreamt of. But every journey has risks. Envy. What's past is past, what's gone is gone. The door is shut and the curtain's drawn. The, the lands that, that are no longer there. there. The, the dreams, dreams we, we did, did not, not get, get to share. When all we love is stripped away. A boy must leave. A man must stay. And yet... There is still hope, you see. For you are still a part of me. Although the boy has ceased to be where there was I, there shall be we. The holy flame, it burns away. It shows us there's another way. Let us be together forever and ever and ever. What's said is said, it's time to eat. I'm sure you'll find me quite a treat.
no other way. Yes. Too soon to let go. Too late to turn back. You're a brave lad, James. I hope you will find what you're looking for. A story of self-acceptance and the ability to let go. Lily's flame burnt bright within James, but he needed to make a decision. To let her go, or to let her take over. A life for a life, death for a death. Building a character is the actor's one true goal. Did he achieve it? And so, here we are again. How many times has it come? <laughs> you don't know, do you? How would you? You don't even know what you are. An artist giving an unfocused performance. A creature trapped in a prison of its own making. A voice calls out to the director, pleading for the director's help. He must resist her. The director awakes in his office, surrounded by movie posters of his work, not to mention a few notes that give us some insight into his current state of mind. The film's only redeeming quality remains performance. Not all of us have forgotten the star of the silent movie era after he left the industry so abruptly. I'm delighted to say his talent still shines even in such an awful production. When asked why he plays in his film, the star told us, He approached me with enthusiasm saying that he was a fan and I couldn't say no to such passion. After they fell into debt with the studio, perhaps the only talented person on the crew proposed that he'll write a script for a new movie that would finally earn some money. The same movie that killed him two months later. Daughter blames the director for his death, saying that he took advantage of her father after his fall from grace. Already the director is partially to blame for the death of a scriptwriter. His daughter blames him. Could that be who the director dreamt of at the start? He wrote this movie to help us. He wouldn't want us to abandon it. I'll finish the script and we'll shoot it together for him. An unnamed woman speaks of continuing the work of the deceased scriptwriter. They should finish the film. You changed the script. You said you would just finish it. Was it was an unpolished draft. It was my father. I know what he wanted to say. Immediately we can hear the daughter of the scriptwriter, seemingly rewriting her father's work, taking control of the film for herself. The plot is different. The plot makes sense. It didn't before, and you knew about it. He knew what he was doing. He wanted this movie to be a warning. A warning against demons and monsters. It's absurd. I don't want him to be remembered as a maniac. A warning against what monsters, exactly? He did warn the director against her. Could he be referring to his own daughter? 
or possibly the Rat Queen. You had to know he was ill, and you enabled him, encouraged his delusions. I trusted his vision. You trusted his madness. Listen, you know I am good at this. We can make a good movie. Or we can smear my father's name, making the unfinished draft that he wrote in a moment of weakness. The daughter pushes the narrative that her father was unstable, filled with delusions that the director allowed to come to the surface. Her father's final work was a mess. Since she knows his true vision, she will correct the film and keep his legacy intact. It is your choice. You're the director after all. The director can find a room filled with scenes that he must direct for the movie. Alongside them is the original script, written in black from the typewriter. This was written by the deceased scriptwriter. The unfinished draft, as his daughter puts it. Well, the red writing and pen is from the daughter that wishes to revise this scene entirely with her own ideas. While the blue pen is that of the director, assessing the scene overall, from the original incarnation to the revised vision of the daughter. In the end, it is the director's final choice. Let's begin with the first scene. Scene 13. Fade in. Interior, basement, night. A mysterious room with a pentagram drawn on the floor. Some kind of ritual is happening. There are a few cultists around the pentagram. Leader is kneeling. Sacrifice approaches the middle of the circle. Leader draws his own blood. Sacrifice disappears and Leader raises his hands in triumph. This is too soft. We need shock. We need a hook. We need to convey the danger of the situation. It goes as written. Pentagram, cultists, ritual, leader on his knees. But after sacrifice disappears, leader is stubbed by a mysterious shadow figure and dies. Death shaped his life. Over and over and over again. We can hear the writer as she continues her work for the Rat Queen at the Lighthouse, speaking how the director's life has been shaped by death. The sound of rats can be heard as he looks over his work. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter what they think. Just making movies. It's magic. It's new. It's world changing. You might recognize the mannequins from the actor's story. These return in the director's story, acting in for past staff at the studio. These two, speaking on the death of the scriptwriter and the investigation that took place over it. I heard they closed the case. Unfortunate accident, they say. I don't know. There's something more going on here. We all feel it. We enter the set for our first scene, once again acted out by the mannequins. The director will have to make decisions in the film, using props Rolling. to make the scene play Sound. out how they want. For example, Action. the first scene, it has all the aspects of the script up until the cultist with the bowl needing to draw his own blood. Without a knife, the scene makes no sense. The director needs to find the prop. It doesn't look that great. I can't imagine going there again. I, I don't remember being there. Ever. Nobody does. I mean, we must have gone there, but my mind just goes blank when I think about it. What went blank? Where did they go when they lost their memory? A person should be steady, unflinching, otherwise they end up as a prop for others to use. Straight out of a horror film, but thankfully it's just a shadow puppet, simply an illusion of the light. Art needs to be larger than life. The director finds his prop, under a watchful eye of course. 
We place the dagger for the cultist and allow the scene to play again, this time implementing Rolling. the daughter's vision also. Sound. Action. Notice how, as the shadow creature that the daughter implemented into the story appears, the rats run through the scene. A sign, perhaps? Good. It's better than the script. We're ready. Get the reel. An obituary can be found in the halls after the first scene. At first I thought it was for the script writer, but it doesn't appear to be. It mentions an unnamed person who was killed under incomprehensible and tragic circumstances, fatally wounded by a shotgun blast, committed by her spouse. She left behind her two children, who were her world. A terrifying scene for the director, a woman in red weeping over the deceased, but who is it? The sounds of rats fade as the director finds himself once again in the theater, in desperate need to film his next scene. He tried to talk about ghosts that haunted him. You said you would finish the script, not rewrite it. I didn't realize how bad it was. Madman's ramblings, no plot, just occult gibberish, and you encouraged it. You know, we need this movie to be great. I don't intend to end my career now. We need shock, blood, gore. Something people will remember for years. But of course, if you want to stick with his version, go ahead. You're the director after all. The daughter has ulterior motives. This goes beyond her father, changing the script to suit her own ambitions. Returning to the office, we get a glimpse of the relationship that these two shared. Our sources on the set told us that on the day died, his stunt double called in sick. The director, furious, got into an argument with the star's daughter. The worst so far, an anonymous crew member said. The two fought regularly since the first day the woman arrived on the set. The daughter and the director always seem to bump heads, and we learn from this mask that the deceased scriptwriter was once an actor, speaking on how his daughter believed he lost his mind when he gave up acting, but insists that she was wrong. His mind was clearer than ever. She's destructive. I won't have the movie falling apart because of one You're woman. You're too afraid of destruction. What? Don't try to preserve everything. Destruction is part of life. Accept it. Revel in it. This is a movie about destruction. About lives ruined and lost. A, a warning must be shocking. But we have it. The woman in red returns, blocking the path for the director. We have a bedtime story. I spent years researching her, and I'm telling you, what we're making isn't bad enough. Her? Hush! It's time for the next two scenes. Scene 22. Fade in. Interior, oval room, night. Oval room in the mansion, static, camera. View through the arch doorway. One of the cultists is sitting in the room, 
The killer, sacrificed from the first scene, approaches slowly. The person sees the killer enter the room and runs. Killer shoots at them but misses. This version gives a slapstick vibe. We need to establish that the killer is actually dangerous. Also, we need it to be more visually appealing. The killer appears with a machete. He throws it and hits the cultist's back. Then he approaches his wounded victim slowly, menacingly, and finishes them off. Scene 66. Fade in. Interior renovation room night. Killer finds two cultists in the room. He throws one of them down. The second one, upon seeing it, runs away, frightened. We need to escalate the gore here. The falling cultist is impaled on the table. The other one falls from the ladder, tries to defend himself with a hammer. Killer saws off his hand, then decapitates him. The one impaled dies when the chandelier falls on him. It's a bloodbath. The shock, terror, and pain. He wanted to throw it all out. We can see a pattern in the daughter's writing, adding gore and violence for the sake of it, taking satisfaction in it. But the director does have the final say after all. Hey, I know how to fix it. It'll be okay. The director arrives on the new set, ready for the scene. But let's see how this plays out without any props. Rolling. Sound. Action. Something's off. The key here is positioning. In the original script, the victim needs to escape after being attacked. We need the prop for the killer and a new angle for the victim. Oh shit, oh shit, shit, shit! It's okay, it's okay. Here, let me bandage it. What if it was rabid? The staff members were bitten by rats. Another terrifying sign of the real influence behind this creative mind. Careful, we don't want any more accidents. We find the gun with the woman in red watching every moment. Now let's see how the scene is meant to play out, minus the gratuitous violence added by the daughter. I think we're good. We're ready. Get the reel. Okay, people, on to the next scene. Another scene finished. Only three more to go. I want to take my time before I make a masterpiece. But yeah, I do have something in mind. The next set is ready, but once again we hear how much influence the rats had on the staff. You're just seeing things. Get some rest, I'm sure it was nothing. Rest? I haven't rested since we started shooting. I don't sleep, I don't eat, there are rats in my kitchen. We head out to find the prop, this time a hammer. We're keeping to the original vision, straying away from the daughter's influence. The most important thing in art. Ha! <laughs> Stubbornness. Rolling. Sound. Action. We have it, people! Notice how, without her influence, the killer never succeeds. Instead, the victims get away.
The woman in red continues to appear in the hallways, chasing the director, rats following suit. Together. The woman in red turns into the camera woman that we've seen previously working on the scenes. Could this be the daughter? I learned a lot about her. And I... I'm... I think she knows that. And she's not happy. In the end, there was only terror. Three scenes finished, only two more to go. It's shocking, it's grotesque. The form swallows up the essence. D do you really think this is what he wanted to say? All this blood and gore just to shock? He didn't aim for shock, he aimed for a warning. My father believed that there are monsters in this world. There is no monster in this film. There are only people. Strangely, the daughter calls out her father for the gore in the script, which in reality is her own revisions that contain majority of the violence. But the monster being mentioned, could the script writer know about the Queen of Rats? Was it her book that he found? Did she I'm kill sorry. him for it? I can't do this anymore. You've been wonderful to work with. Sure, we never made anything prominent, but we had a good time, and the work sustained us. I wanted to see this through with you. Alas, I can't stop thinking about its last moments, how a series of inconsequential events, stunt double getting sick, you and arguing again, how it all led to his death, how small things keep happening, how there are more and more rats on the set, Despite everything we do, how I keep having nightmares, I'll be frank with you. I'm afraid. I hope we meet again. I hope we'll make another movie together. But for now, I need to leave. Odd how everything that has been found suggests that the death of the script writer was almost a freak coincidence. A bunch of small things that all added up, not to mention the rats. She, knows. she sees you. She sees my daughter. God help us. She doesn't want it to be made. She turned her eyes on us. Her eyes. What are you talking about? Don't ask. You cannot comprehend her. The queen, the being, the muse. She will use all her power to stop us. But we cannot. This we have to see through. The warning in the script, the monsters that he mentioned, it's exactly who we thought, the Queen of Rats. He advises the director to finish the film, not to allow her to win. hunted by a god feel the things we have to say going as far as referring to her as a god the director needs to use fear as the tool for the film the fear of the unknown of something bigger incomprehensible i think i know what you were warning us about but we can do better The final two scenes. Scene one plus square root of five divided by two. Fade in. Interior dining room. Evening. Cultists sit at the table. 
There is an intense conversation we cannot hear. They seem to plan killers' demise. There is no suspense. We need them talking, sure, but there has to be a mystery. We had a cage with rats, squeaking and agitated. They foreshadow the unexpected event. Scene 5. Fade in. Interior. Ritual site. That. In the ritual site, similar but different from scene 13, Killer tries to kill himself, summoning the ultimate evil. Other cultists attack, overpower and stop him. Underwhelming. We were setting up the ultimate evil throughout the movie and we need to show it. Killer uses artifacts to summon evil, succeeds in killing himself. It works. We throw all special effects we can here. It should be magnificent. Once again, the daughter mentions rats, wishing to use them within a scene that makes no sense in using them. She clearly knows about the true evil, but is she being controlled by her, perhaps? We will finish it. Ah, take them away! We can find the very box used in the scene as the mannequins get a bit more lively than normal. What? What happened? You've been sleepwalking again. You try to get to the basement set. The staff have been unable to sleep properly. The actress mentions how she would have constant nightmares. And now sleepwalking? Get ready, everyone. Let's do the next scene. Action. Queen of Rats speaks at last, telling the director to ignore his friend, the scriptwriter, otherwise he might just end up like him. Will the director listen? A mannequin is pulled away into the corridors. Could this represent the scriptwriter? We arrive at the basement set as mannequins surround the main actor, but this time the Queen of Rats is the director. Rolling. Sound. Action. This is our final scene, but first we need our props. Understand that every part of the universe is equally vast and uncaring. This is our lot. With everything in place, the only thing left to do is to start filming. Rolling. Sound. Action.
I think this is better than the original. The film is finished, as the director can now put them all together. After all this, they sat together to watch their creation. It is what he wanted. Yes. All his obsessions, all this madness, all your stupid ideas. We don't have to do this. And I helped you! Oh, God, I helped you! You know what? You're right. We don't have to do this. What would you have me do? Betray him? I know you gave it everything you had. I know why you do this. It's just... I can't. It's not for me. Don't contact me ever again, please. It is revealed that the woman in red is actually the daughter of the scriptwriter, and this particular ending was staying true to her father's vision. We can see the Rat Queen guiding the daughter out of the theatre as she mentions her displeasure at the final product, showing her influence on the daughter this entire time. A few things are obvious. The scriptwriter was killed by the Rat Queen for knowing too much about her, trying to warn his friend, the director, and his daughter through the script. The Rat Queen manipulates people. That much is clear, and even if you oppose her, she still manages to win. There is another ending to which you abide by the daughter's changes, and she is thrilled with the end result. This is good. We actually made a good movie. Now, I understand the path I must tread. Yes. Now I understand the- Sorry, what? 
Hush! You're drowning her out. What are you talking about? I hear you. I hear you. I can see you. The book is almost finished. It's time to end it now, to destroy her once and for all. have the power to set free and you were right I think you should stay here no 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 forever trapped in the lighthouse forced Focus by the queen of rats shape. to continue her writing the queen watches over all the creatives forever never really leaving but there is nothing for the writer to do now than to finish the final story. The final note. The very first memory is that of hitting a piano key. My small, chubby finger. The cold, smooth ivory under my skin. And then, acceleration. Pure joy as I heard the immediate response to my action sound that appeared just because I pressed that key. I'm not gonna let it go. I won't be imprisoned. You mustn't give up. You had everything any of us ever wanted. You still do. Your talent, your marriage, your daughter. Neither of these went away. The only thing the flames changed was you. You have power over yourself. Live your life. Reclaim it. Don't let your body be your cage. A comforting note from a friend. This one being Beatrice Gillespie. A talented up-and-coming writer. She knows the situation of her life, and a kind word never goes astray. Hush now, my baby. I'll tell you a tale. There was a man whose world wasn't pale. There was a woman who made the world sing. And they found love, the most beautiful thing. After some time, they had a child that brought light to their life, a lot of light. She loved her parents, her dolls, and her toys. And even Daddy wasn't mad at her noise. Then, one day, there was a fire. It took from Mommy all her desires. She didn't know what to do with her life. And then, she found a very sharp knife. Is this how I looked? A jarring thing it must be, scarred from an accident, unable to look the way that you once did, and the constant reminder from your husband of what is no more. The pain was debilitating, the morphine was not enough. Not to mention the bandages, just another way for them to bind her, just like the shackles. Take it away. I can't look at it. And don't try to bind me again. All this house has ever felt like since the accident is a prison, bound by the walls and doors. She can't get out. Go on like 
this. I need to break free. If the finger you put it on has been deformed, destroyed, does the marriage even stand a chance? Does he still love her the same? Or does he love his art more? His paintings of her? Today, a lock jammed in the bedroom door. I started screaming, begging anyone to open. It was a good half hour before a maid showed up. I don't understand. I lock the door in the house all the time. But something about being in a room I couldn't leave was just unbearable. I can't breathe in here! He enjoys this, keeping her here. It's obvious what he's doing as she isn't going to let him get away with it. I know it now. I'm measured. My room is shrinking every day. He paints it at night and every morning the walls are this much closer. My prison grows smaller every day. The painting is so bland that you have to focus to see that it's even there. Looks like the work of a person afraid to change his surroundings. Someone who's resigned and isn't willing to put himself out there. Who hates to see even his loved ones out and about and free. A man who will imprison his family just to stop them from getting better than him. Her brewing hatred of him can only be overcome by her love of music. Whatever you say about this place, it had great acoustics. I could move souls. I could do anything I wanted with them. If I had them listening, this here, it was my place of power. But her dreams about music were something to behold. It hurts. I'm so sorry. God, I just wanted to stop. It will. We'll look for help. Everything will be all right. No, I, I don't want more strangers to see me like this. But I can't do this alone. I'm not a doctor. There's my work, there's our daughter. There's too much for one person. Please, darling. We need help. There's more than one person. I will look after myself. I am strong enough. You know me. I will power through it. The body is unable to do as the mind wants. She is still a talented player. She deserves another shot. Are you insane? You can barely write. You can't be planning solo piano concerts. And you shouldn't be surprised. Nobody wants to talk to you about that. This is crazy, even for you. If you keep going on like this, you'll hurt yourself. Keep to your writing for now. And when you send a letter that is actually legible, you can, I think. Try to practice playing again. He doesn't understand what it's like for her to be in her situation. Every dream she had vanished in that fire. Now she's left chained to her bed and this house. Oh, have a responsibility. There's a child who needs you. I understand this is hard. I, I understand that you're in pain. But you are a mother for God's sake. There's almost nothing left of her now but the sadness. The sadness remains. The Rat Queen watches over every creative closely, digging her claws ever deeper. 
When I had Sebastian, I thought I would be the best mother to ever walk the earth, and it almost killed me. With Margaret, I give myself more space to breathe, to be myself. I am happier for that, and the children seem to be happier too. Honey, wait for me. Not so fast. <laughs> wait for mommy. When in darkness, try to remember that you have a daughter. You brought her into this world, and she needs you. Be strong for her, if not for yourself. They tried to play, but it was insane. To caress a child with hands bound with chain. Come on, sweetie. You know mommy can't go down there with you. There is still much her daughter needs to learn to understand about the world. She's only getting older, and it's probably best she gets messages from her mother. Unable to play with her daughter and a husband that locks himself away every day in a painting room of his. She can't get out. I need to do more. If they see me playing a sonata, they, they won't lock me up. Such a delicious despair. You can feel it, can't you? Everything in my life is tainted now. Soaked in ever-moving shadows, the flames cast on me. They surround the cell I'm locked in, and there seems to be no escape. Yesterday, I played with our daughter for a while. She was a bit shy at first, but then she loosened a bit. Started to laugh and dance. I felt the happiness coming. It, it was just at the door. And then... Like a guard in a prison, feeling that I might just catch a glimpse of freedom. The pain came. I saw the fear in her eyes. In her mind, I must be a maimed monster, haunting her worst nightmares. Lost in despair, unable to find a purpose. She struggles to get out of bed, not seeing the point in eating or even talking. The doctor said that he can't take her back to how she once was. Now she is left trapped in this prison that they call a body. And without her talent, what can she bring to this world? Pathetic, you weakling. You claim that you're perfect? Nothing would hurt you if it were the truth. Perfection is incorruptible, eternal, proud. Look at you, chasing me around like a fool. What even am I to you? My true self. I am perfect. Nothing can hurt me. This is just a test, and I'm passing it. Everything is fine. A mind shattering into a million pieces. Memories filled with pain, everything burnt like the walls in the fire.
From what you write, this whole situation is very hard for your child. Maybe you should spend less time with her. I know it's painful, but I believe it will be for the best. You both need time. Sometimes I think she changed too much. That this is not the person I loved. That this is not a person I could ever love. an artist, a musician, a woman in her many roles, muse, wife, mother. To call yourself anything, you need to at least strive for perfection. I didn't strive. I achieved it. And then it was taken from me. side of the cage that was my life. I will not accept it. I am no one. I am nothing if not perfect. So silent. A tragic story and in some ways you could say the most tragic of all and with the ending of the final note the book is complete the writer has completed her work and is now required to continue her writing on behalf of the rat queen and that also concludes the entire story of layers of fear once again a huge thank you to blooper team for sending me a code for the game it was an absolute treat creating the video and also a huge thank you to you for watching the video. If you've watched the whole thing, firstly you're insane and awesome, but write in the comments down below, long live the rat queen, so I know. I tried a very different approach with this video to attempt, to the best of my ability anyway, to capture the amazing atmosphere and world that Layers of Fear has. Not to mention one of my favorite game soundtracks that I have ever heard. Uh, remember to like the video if you enjoyed as it helps us out a heap. And of course subscribe as we will be making much more lore content in the future. Thanks again guys. Until next time, peace. <laughs>